Hi, and welcome back. It's the first day of fall in 2020, and Traction has, over the weekend, released an update to Waveform. This is 11.1 update. And quite a few things have happened since the initial release, and so I went back through all the update files, and I just found what has changed since the initial release, and I'm going to show you those things in this video. So the very first one has to do with the browser. There is a new setting. Now, you can always have more than one of these browser panels and tabs available by clicking the little plus over here. However, there's a new setting in settings on the appearance page. If you go down here where it says the browser, in the browser section here, always lay out panels horizontally. I'm going to leave that off. This is the new option right there. With it off, if you click plus to add a browser panel, they stack up like this. So if I hit plus, I add another one. If I go down here and hit plus, I add another one and they're stacked up. Now I've always wanted to see them side by side and that's exactly what we can do with this new feature. So I'll close those up, go back over to settings, and always lay out panels horizontally or essentially side by side if it's on the left or the right. So now when I click plus, I have my two browsers side by side. Now this is great. If you're on the pro version of Waveform, then you can have all of your action panel stuff here, which is very similar to what you'd find in the properties panel, and then do something else like the search tab to search for plugins, loops, or step clips. Or another way to do this would be to have this available while you also have your tracks available so you can turn on or off your tracks. Of course, any combination of these, and you could even have more. I mean, you can add a third column if you want, they all size equally, so as you pull this to the side, then you'll see that you have the ability to resize them somewhat. I'm going to close that one. Since this has come out, I typically leave actions here, and then I put this on search, and that's my kind of common setup. Today, or this week, I'm running it on the left. You can also run this whole setup on the right, and the way you do that is you go up to the right corner where there's this I, you could just, this is the actions panel. You can show or hide it here. Also the keyboard shortcut B will show or hide it. But you can drag this then to the other side like this. So then if you wanted, you could have those panels on the side. In that case, I would get the actions panel typically here and then get my search tab going like this. And it works pretty good. I'm going to put it back over here on this side and then move on to the next feature, which is also in the browser and in the search tab. When you preview step clips or MIDI clips that have drum sounds, there's now a drum instrument built into the browser preview. I'm just going to type in step clip and I'll click on one of these step clips. And you hear down at the bottom here, you've got this play. It will allow you to audition all of your step clips. So that's a nice new feature. And that also includes probably the highlight feature of 11.1, which is all of these new step clips. And the way you get to them is go to your search tab, type in step clip. And then the best thing to do at this point is to go up here where it says name and click name to sort them by name. That groups all of these different step clips together. So if you look through here, you've got a wide variety of things. Like if we go down here, you'll find here's some hip hop ones. Now as you click, you're hearing them through a default because they're essentially step clips, so they're playing MIDI. You're hearing it through the new default preview instrument. But if you want to use them in your project, just drag them in 
and you can play them through anything. So I've set up a few on here. This one here, if we click on it, is hip hop number 31. You can see the step clip right here. I'm gonna play that through the MT Power drum kit. That goes then on into hip hop 32, hip hop 33, and this one is hip hop 34. So I'm just grabbing a series of them so you can get an idea of what they sound like. Actually, let's just put them all on one track to start with. You can also move these clips track to track with a nudge by holding down shift and using the arrow keys. That keeps them all nicely time synced. Rewind and play this back. So that's with the free MT Power drum kit that I know a lot of you already use that. Now I'm gonna move all of these clips to the next track, which has the micro drum sampler on it, it is set to an 808 type sound, which it is set to the micro 808 sound. So I'll option select these, shift down arrow to move them to that track, rewind. So that's pretty cool. I added a crusher from DAW Essentials, a bit crusher set up like this. I'll just show you the effect of that. So that's an example of that. Let's listen to some other step clips. So that doesn't sound so good there, but let's just see what it sounds like if you drag it in. Just drag it in, drop it. It's already time synced to my tempo. I think it's pretty cool. Let's see what it sounds like with the MT Power Kit set. So anyway, these are all very versatile. I have a hip hop, so I have my tempo is set a little bit lower, but if we find something like what else have we got we've got trap we've got hard style so if we want to try the hard style let's just grab some of these we'll put them on this track And somehow I've got them shifted early in time. So I'll do an hold down uh, Alt or Option and I'll just drag them make sure they're at, at beat one. We're gonna crank the tempo up because this style is typically much faster, 140 to 150. Let's do 145 for our tempo. Maybe not the best selection of the sound. Let's see what we have on drum sampler. Drum sampler has a 909. Let's try it with a 909. So there is a lot of things that you can do to go through here. Another interesting one is the uh, the juke, which gives you kind of a, a samba feel. So anyway, there's a lot of new step clip content here to explore, drag them in, get a start to your project, and then you can easily edit those in the step sequence or clips. Now there's a few changes to the samplers, the drum sampler, the micro drum sampler, 
and the multi sampler all have some minor tweaks that make them just a little bit nicer to use, especially when you're programming them. So I'm going to start with the micro drum sampler. So you may not have even realized anything changed on this, but in the drum pad area where we have 16 pads, the pads now show the MIDI note number, which is a nice reference. Also, there's a new right click menu. If you right click on here, you can clear the pad, you can change the color, if, which makes it so much faster to change the color. Normally you would click these, go to this menu here, and you would do the same things. But now you can do it by just right clicking right on the pad that you're working on. You can easily change the drum icon, or if you don't like these icons, you can set the icons to none. So we have the note number there. You can go right in here and you can also clear it. So if you clear the pads, you can just quickly clear them completely, taking out the color. Now this is really helpful when you're modifying something and you're using it with step clips because any pad that's cleared will not show up as a step clip channel. I'm going to demonstrate what I mean right now. When I drag in a clip using the clip dragging icon or the clip object, and I create a new step clip, I get on the step clip, I get a channel here for each drum pad when you use it with one of the traction instruments, like the waveform built-in instruments will automatically populate this with whatever you have set up here. So you'll see snare one, cowbell, all that stuff. I've got channels for all of those. So if you really want to have a stripped down, simplified step clip without all these channels, then you can get it down to just the basics by just clearing the ones you don't want. So if we want to focus on just snare, we don't want a side kick, we clear that kick. We have a closed and open hi-hat, get rid of this. So now we have only the essential things we would normally use for our fundamental drum programming. Go in and drag in another step clip, insert step clip, and you'll see I have only those channels, which makes programming this much more straightforward. And if you save this setup, then you've got exactly what you want. Sometimes I also don't really like to see these icons, so I just go in here, drum icon, none, drum icon, none, drum icon, none, and I've got it set up the way I want. Okay, so here's yet another thing you can do. You can drag these around now. So if I grab this kick, I can move it to this pad, so it's now in that pad position. Right click, drum icon, none, so I've got my kick where I want it. Maybe I want my snare here. And you can organize it the way you like. So these exact same features you'll find on the other instruments as well. If we open the normal drum sampler that comes with Waveform Pro, we've got the very same right click menu. We can clear these, we can drag instruments. Uh, we have the note number on there and just some nice little upgrades. One thing to point out, I'm not sure exactly when this came into being, maybe with version 11, there are a few new kits. If you're on the drum sampler, so you can see that we've got some acoustic kits here and some retro electronic kits that didn't used to be there. And if you look at multi-sampler, multi-sampler has quite a few patches now, like a draw bar organ, and there's a piano in here. 909, all the drum kits are also in here as well. If you're on a drum kit and you go into the pad view on this, then we've got the same right click menu to org organize or quickly reorganize these drum pads. Now, another new feature in Waveform 11 is plugin sandboxing. If we go to the plugin tab, you'll see that we've got enable plugin sandboxing. I have it turned on. This runs the plugins in a separate process so that if a plugin crashes, it doesn't crash your project. Now, if you're having problems or you feel like you want to run it the old way, you can turn this off right here. You need to restart your project for that. So initially, it was not enabled by default, but in the interim and included in version 1.1, this will be enabled by default. So you can either run it or not. If you have problems, you can turn it off diagnostically but generally that gives you some advantages. 
Now, for Windows and Linux users, there's a new option on the Appearance page that allows you to select an OpenGL renderer to possibly facilitate quicker user interface response compared to the normal software renderer. This is available on Windows or Linux. You'll find it on the Appearance tab in Settings. If you look down at the bottom, you'll find the GUI rendering mode, and it by default will be on the software render, but you can change that to the OpenGL renderer and see if that improves your performance. That's highly dependent on the kind of system you have, but it is a new option that you can explore. So there is a handful of useful updates in this 11.1 release for Waveform. I hope you enjoyed this summary video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon.